Hello everyone. I'm Sushmita Sarkar from RV College of Engineering. Welcome all of you for Power System Analysis 2 Lecture 4 in Module 1. Fine, so we'll see in the Module 1, uh, we have learned about the network model formulation. Then we have seen the formation of Vibus by inspection method with and without regulating transformer. Now, today in this particular lecture, we'll see the formation of Vibus by singular transformation method. But before going to that, we have to learn what is a network topology, a basic of network topology, which will help us to build the bus incidence matrix. And then next lecture, we'll talk about primitive network. When these two particular concepts are clear, then only we can go for formation of Vibus by singular transformation method. So let us start today's lecture on bus incidence matrix. Fine, so here we'll see, we'll take a network, a single line diagram, where you can see there are number of generators, buses, transmission lines, transformers, etc. Last uh, semesters, I hope all of you have learned and understood how to convert a single line diagram into a positive sequence network. So this is your positive sequence network where you can see the number of generators because generators are usually grounded. So you get the reference point zero. So now this particular positive sequence network, I will be converting into a graph. Fine. So graph is nothing but all these points which you see one, two, three, four and zero will be expressed as a nodes and all the uh, transmission lines uh, or the connections between the buses or buses and the reference will be considered as elements. So let us see what is the graph of that particular network. Fine. So how do we define a graph? A graph shows the geometrical interconnection of the elements of a network. So as I have told you, the buses you had, four buses, one, two, three, four, and how we have connected over there in the network, same way you will be connecting between the buses. So we have got the reference point over here due to the presence of generator. Fine, so the generator gives you the ground point. In the absence of generator, you will not have these three elements, one, two, three, fine. So in that case, any one of the existing four buses will be considered as a reference bus. Fine, so let us continue with this. So this particular graph gives me how many elements, all the lines which are connected between the two nodes are called as elements and we usually denote it as small e. Okay, so we denote it as small e and these nodes are denoted as small n. Fine, so here all together we have five nodes we have four buses and we have seven elements. I hope it's clear. We have four nodes, one, two, three, and four. And we have, uh, uh, we have, sorry, we have five nodes, zero, one, two, three, four. We have five nodes. We have four buses, one, two, three, four. And we have seven elements, which I have numbered in an order. You can cross check it, okay? So now when this particular graph has been given orientation, then the graph is called as oriented graph, fine. So now we have just given an uh, arbitrary orientation for this particular graph. So you can see if each element of the connected graph is assigned a direction, it is then said to be an oriented graph, okay? So basically this direction of, or the orientation of these elements shows the flow of current, fine. So you are basically giving a certain uh, orientation over it and based on these orientation, we just uh, form our bus incidence matrix. So we'll come to that later. So let us first understand uh, what is the subgraph of these main graph. Usually this main graph is divided into two subgraphs, which we call it as a tree and co-tree. Fine, so how do we define a tree? So a connected subgraph containing all the nodes of the graph, but not making any closed path is called a tree. Fine, so basically this is what is your tree and it is not necessary that always the shape of the tree will have one particular pattern. So the tree, if you, the different students can draw a different tree, fine, but only the concept has to be clear. You have to connect all the nodes without making a closed loop, okay? So you have to connect all the five points. So my tree can be zero to one, one to two, two to three and three to four. That is also a tree. I am connecting all the nodes, but I'm not making a closed path, okay? Or I can go for zero to one to zero, zero to two, two to four, four back to three. That is also a tree. 
So keep that uh, concept clear. The tree is basically a connection of all the nodes, but not making any closed loop in it, fine? And the elements of the tree are called as branches. And the branches will be usually represented by solid line. So which we have shown over here. So branches, how do we define this branches? How many branches should be there in a particular tree? So branches are nothing but node minus of one. I repeat, the number of branches will be equal to number of nodes minus of one. So in this particular case, you have five nodes. So five minus one will give you four branches. So we have all numbered as one, two, three, and four branches, fine. Similarly, the other part, the left out part of the graph, we call it as a co-tree. So basically, co-tree is a complement of a tree. So let us see what is co-tree. So now you can see, guys, the rest part of the main graph is called as a co-tree or it is a complement of a tree. And the elements of these co-tree are called as links. As when this co-tree gets connected with your main tree, this form a loop, fine? So that is why these are called as links and they are usually represented by a dotted line, fine? So now how many uh, elements do, how many uh, links, uh, the elements of the coterie are called as links. So how many links will I have, okay? How many links we will have in a particular graph? So that is nothing but you know how many elements, so elements is your seven. How many branches in that? There are four. So seven minus four will give you the number of links. So basically I have the general formula. The link is equal to number of elements minus number of branches. So in this particular case, I have seven elements and the four branches. So the number of links are three. So you can see then uh, there are three, number one, number two, and number three. So you have totally three links for this particular graph. Fine, so with this basic, let us understand, uh, just for more better understanding, I have just taken this animation. So this is your tree. So that is your core tree. And when you do this, this will make your complete graph. I just repeat, this is your tree. This is your core tree. And this will make the complete graph. And you can see as core tree comes and occupy this space, this will give you a loop formation in your network. Fine, so now this particular graph shows you, you have total number of seven elements, you have five nodes, you have four branches and you have three links. I hope this basic of network is clear to all of you. Fine, so with that particular understanding, let us uh, understand what is element node incidence matrix before going to bus incidence matrix. Fine. So element node incidence matrix is basically a matrix where you are making uh, the number of rows are your elements and the number of columns are your node. So basically you try to show the interconnections between the nodes through via element. Fine. So there are certain rules to make that matrix, to build that matrix. So the rule number one is if you're uh, a of ij, the particular value of that element in your matrix will be equal to one. If the ith element is incident two and oriented away from the jth node. So if your arrow mark is away from the jth node and towards the ith node, then that will become a plus one. It will be minus one if the element is incident two and oriented towards the jth node. Okay, so if it is away from the jth node, it is positive. If it is towards the jth node, it is negative. And if it is not at all incident to that particular ith node, then it will become equal to zero, fine. If the ith element is not incident towards the jth node, please understand this. I am talking about the ith element. Element number is ith and the node we are talking about jth. So if you take any ith element, which is oriented away from the jth node, then it is plus one, okay? So for an example, let us take one for understanding this. So suppose I have, this is my element connected between bus one and bus two, okay? So if it is direction of this, I give like this orientation, 
then for the particular bus two this will taken as a plus one but for a one it is towards the one then it will be taken as minus one okay so away from the jth node is a uh, two and towards the jth node it will be taken as uh, minus one away is plus one and towards is minus one and if the element does not exist between these two nodes then it is a zero now the question comes what is the size of this a cap matrix this is basically a guys it is an a cap so we write it as an a cap okay this, this is basically an a cap matrix so as the name says it is element and node so the size of the matrix is also going to be e cross n e stands for element n stands for node okay so this is your e cross n matrix and the mat the rank of this matrix will be always less than n let us see how it is fine so let us this is your a cap I, as i told you the number of uh, rows are going to be your elements and number of columns so you can see i have written over here e and here it is n so these represents your nodes and this represents your elements fine so let us get the graph once again to write the a cap matrix it will become easier if i have the graph now look at over here this is your element number one so i will be concentrating on element number one fine so this is your element number one so let us concentrate in element number one let us clear me out this one so we'll let us consider concentrate in element number one so element number one is this one okay element number one is this one so this is connected between the reference bus zero and bus number one so your uh, you, you should concentrate in between this and this this is the two points this is connected between the reference node and the bus number one so it is away from reference node and it is towards the bus number one so what does it says the rule if it is away it should be plus one and if it towards it's minus one so here i'll be getting plus one and here i'll be getting minus one i hope it is clear for all of you guys now look at the element number two so element number two is this okay this is your element number two so element number two is between the reference bus and the uh, bus number two so this is your reference bus and this is your bus number two so i have I, I, so these two places has to be zero uh, i have to put the values other wherever you are not putting anything is obviously they are not incident towards the, those particular nodes and hence they are zero so you need not to write zero it is understood uh, they are not connected in those particular nodes okay there are no elements in those particular nodes so now here if you see the two so two will become away from zeroth node so it will be one and towards two it's minus one similarly the element number three element number three is zero and four so this is your zero point position and this is your fourth position at third row fine so this will be again plus one and this will become minus one okay let us see number four number four is here element number four is connected between three and four okay so the direction is away so three and four so this is my element number four and it is between three and four so these are the two points where i have to write okay so it is away from four so four will be plus one and three will be minus one so guys look at over here in the matrix three is minus one because the arrow sign it's towards the node three minus one and it's away from node four so it is plus one fine it's clear so i think if understood for all of you so number five number five is between two and three so five is between two and three so now you guys tell me what i should write fine so two is positive and three is negative okay similarly six is going to between one and two six is between one and two so here this is your one this is your two so guys one will be positive and two will be negative fine and the last element we are left out with seven so seven is between two and four so it is away from two so two is positive and four is negative so two will be positive and four will be negative okay so i hope uh, the concept of this a cap matrix is clear to you fine now we required bus incidence matrix okay but this is a cap gives you 
element node incidence matrix. So whichever out of these five nodes, whichever is your reference node, just delete that column. So if you delete that column, the rest of the matrix will give you bus incidence matrix. So it is very simple. So let us see what is that. Fine, so the rules remain same. The rule uh, doesn't change. Yeah, very important thing, which I missed out over here telling that. So guys, look at over here, A cap. So this is, if you do the addition of all these rows, the addition of all these rows will give you zero. Fine, the addition of all these rows will give you zero. So that makes the uh, rank of the matrix less than one. Fine. So another thing which you have to note down over here, we are going to keep in mind that how do we place these elements over here? Okay, so always the first elements don't write randomly one, two, three, four, five, give the numbering of the branches first. Okay, so first we form a tree. So give the numbering of the tree first and then give the numbering of four tree. So that means first this will should take care of the branches and then the link should come. The order should be maintained. If the order is not maintained later on, even though your procedures are right, but due to the wrong order, you will reach to a wrong answer. Fine, so remember this will take it as a branch. Okay, so these are all branch. Sorry, so these are all branches. Fine, so I will be just taking a pen. So this is a branch and this is your link. Fine, so branch and link order has to be maintained. So now coming to an A matrix, the rule of the A matrix remains same. I just told you, if you know the A cap matrix, A, whichever is your reference bus, that particular column will be deleted and you will get back to your bus incidence matrix. Fine, the size of this matrix will be E cross N minus one because your buses will be N my node minus of one. So the matrix size will be N minus one. So now you can see that A matrix I have written that since zero was your reference uh, column. So I've just deleted the column over there and this rest of the matrix is your A matrix. So you can see here the first, we will not get uh, addition of these first three rows as zero. So usually, this matrix is a rectangular and hence we call it as a singular matrix. Fine. So I have just mentioned over here. And uh, another thing, we use this matrix in our uh, Y-bus formation. Uh, so that's why we call that formation of Y-bus singular transformation. Okay. So how this A comes into that transformation, uh, we'll see in the later derivations. So now first understand the concept which I told you that we should take care of the branches separately and the link separately and we should maintain the order of it. Fine, one more thing which you all of you should note down is very important. That is the uh, addition of the half line charging admittances or line charging admittance. What happens if your system or your network uh, doesn't have line charging admittance and after that you add line charging admittance, does the size of my A matrix increases yes or no? Okay, so the answer is yes. With the line charging admittances, the size of A matrix increases. Now the question comes, how? How does my line charging admittance affect the uh, A matrix? Okay, so to understand that concept, Okay, let me draw a simple network and make you explain this concept. So you now know the basic general equation of A is equal to E cross N minus one. So I hope all of you have understood that the size of the A matrix is E cross N minus one and it is a rectangular matrix and it is called as a singular matrix, fine. So here, what do we see is if I have a system with three bus, for an example, I have a system with three bus, I'm trying to make you explain you guys that how does the half line charging admittance affect the size of an A matrix. So now I'm considering one three bus system, okay, one network with a three bus system and where I have not considered the half line charging admittance. So basically I have three elements, number one, number two, number three. So I have 
Here you can see you have n is equal to three. Basically, you have three nodes. Fine. So basically, you have okay. So n is equal to three. Fine. And how many uh, elements I have? Elements is equal to also three. Elements are also equal to three. I have. And nodes, I have three. So you know the number of buses will be is equal to n minus of one. So you have total number of buses as two. Fine. So you understand with this particular concept, that I have total number of buses are equal to two. Fine. So now, if I have uh, buses are equal to two, so tell me how many branches will I have? This particular graph. will have how many branches okay so the number of branches are equal to n minus 1 the formula says or equal to number of buses so basically you are going to have number of branches n minus 1 three nodes and minus 1 will give you two as an answer so how many links will i have from this how many links will i have the formula of links says okay so what is the formula of links says i'll just write in a simple because it's not looking good with that okay this is your branches this is your links fine the links will be element minus of the branches so element is 3 okay branches are 2 so basically you will have one link okay so basically you have one link so this i made you clear that how many and branches and link will i have fine so now for what uh, a one person can i i'll just erase a uh, one person can make a tree of this graph as like this and like this okay so this will become your uh, uh, what do you call it as a tree so you, your element number is 1 and 3 and 2 will become your link because it makes a close path so 2 will become your link fine so when you write the matrix you please remember if your tree is like this and another person can make a tree like this that's what i made you understand tree can be different for a different person you can from only thing you have to connect all the nodes fine so my node number 1 node number 2 node number 3 all are connected fine this is your node number 1 this is your node number 2 and this is your reference node so all the nodes are connected so my tree whether i put it in this particular format and this particular format it's all same so but only my link will change so in this case this will be link so this is your element number 1 this is your element number 2 and element the 3 so in this case your branch is going to be like this so here if i write an a matrix so a matrix is going to be element versus uh, nodes uh, sorry element versus bus so this is your 1 2 and 3 and you know it is your element cross nodes so in case of an uh, elements cross of bus so bus the reference node will not come so basically you will have number 1 and number 2 okay so you have only two buses 1 and 2 0 is a reference point this is your a matrix if you write 0 it becomes your a cap matrix fine so now this is my element so total what will be the size of my this particular matrix so basically if the half line charging admittances are not present then the size of matrix what you are getting is 3 cross 2 i hope you have understood this if the half line charging admittances are absent then the size of the a matrix right now what you are getting for this particular network consisting of two buses and one reference point or three buses and taking one of the bus as a reference point your size of the matrix has been taken as 3 cross 2 okay i hope this concept is clear now let me explain you with the help of half line charging admittances so for this i will clear all this so now with the half line charging admittance i have to uh, do means you all of you know the half line charging admittance the line which are connected between the two bus uh, between uh, uh, the buses or the line which are connected between uh, the number of lines which are connected between the buses we usually add up all the half line charge gets add up and i basically get a line charging admittance like this okay all the half line charging admittances connected to the bus 1 bus 2 or bus 3 we will just take the same notation 1 2 and 0 okay so all the half line charging respective half line charging admittances i have added and put it as a line charging admittances i have explained this in my lecture 1 i hope it is clear for all of you so now you look at guys now when you plot the graph for this fine so when you plot a graph 
for this particular network what will happen you have a three points so i have a when i draw i have a 1 to 2 i have 2 to 0 it it need not copy the same network you can draw it in a different way as long as your connections are right fine so i'll just mark it as a green color this is your node 1 this is your node 2 and this is your node 0 okay so now i have kept it at node 0 because i have last network also put it as 0 so i kept it as 0 over here but now three elements are and you, right now you are getting a ground point due to your line charging admittance so you will have three more connection one to ground zero to ground and two to ground so basically this will become your reference point or the ground point fine so this is basically your reference point or a ground point so my dear students now you look into this graph and see how many lines or elements have increased after the uh, addition of your half line charging admittance or line charging admittances okay so how many you have got extra 1 2 and 3 so how do i say 3 so this is based on your elements will increased by the number of buses how many buses you have that many line charging admittances will be present so in this case our a matrix is going to be fine so if you have previously numbered it as 1 2 and 3 you can mark it as 4 5 and 6 okay now here one more thing to keep it in mind either you uh, keep the shunt values at the beginning or at the end same order you have to follow for your uh, y primitive which we will be doing in the next lecture okay the order should be maintained for both same so let us say i have kept the 1 2 3 as it is now 4 5 6 are the new elements which has come into picture due to the effect of half line charging admittances so what will be my elements 1 2 3 i'll be writing okay all uh, these values 1 2 3 so now for for this it depends on which is your tree okay and which is your co tree so based on that you will be getting this fine so if you make your 1 2 3 you cannot make a close part so 1 2 3 will not be your tree fine so you cannot write in an order 1 2 3 4 5 6 fine so your branches should take first so if i make a tree like this okay so i can say a tree like this i have uh, covered all the points over here fine so this is my number 1 this is my 0 and this is 2 and this is a reference point is it okay so if it is i have taken i have considered is it is like this so i have connected all the points i have connected all the points but what it is it is not making any close path so basically i have three branches and otherwise also you find out by a formula branches are nothing but n minus 1 so what is your n how many nodes you have 4 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 so basically exactly you have three branches so what are these three branches as per our graph numbering it is 4 5 and 6 so these are my branches fine so for this particular tree this will act as the co tree okay so that means 1 2 3 3 are going to be my link. Okay, hope I I I am clear. 1, 2, 3 is going to to be be my my link. link. Okay, hope So when I write over here, I will be writing four, five, and six number first. Understand the concept. Write the branches and links separately. Maintain the order. You will never go wrong. Fine. So four, five, six are my branches. That's what we have defined. Now, if you want to know what is your link. so link is going to be how many guys link is going to be element minus of 3 so basically elements are is equal to 6 okay branches are is equal to 3 so links will be 6 minus of 3 will give you 3 so you are going to have a three links fine so this this is how my a matrix will look like i will first write the branches then i will write the links so links will come 1 2 3 later down okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 is your branches will come on top 1 2 3 link will come down and what is your uh, buses 0 1 and 2 these are your buses okay 0 1 and 2 is your bus 0 1 2 is your buses because reference node is already i have marked it as r or reference fine 
So basically, what is the size of the matrix you are getting it as for A matrix? A matrix formula is E cross N minus one. So it is E cross N minus one. So what is your E? Is you are having six. Okay. What is your number of nodes? How many number of nodes you have? You have four number of nodes. Okay. Three are already existing. Fourth you got due to half line charging admittance. So you get four minus one. So what is the final answer I am getting as six cross three? Okay. So what was your answer previously? Basically, guys. So for this particular uh, graph or a network, we have seen that without half line charging. Okay. So without half line charging or line charging admittance, without line charging admittance, we we saw that the matrix of a matrix size is three cross two. okay and with line charging admittance with line charging admittance we saw the size will become 6 cross 3 so the addition of line charging admittance does affect your incidence matrix so how does it affect it affects my rows get added or my rows get increased by number of buses and the columns get added by 1 i repeat rows get increased by number of buses and column gets increased by 1 you have to remember these two logic when it is with line charging admittance okay i hope i have made you clear the concept of a matrix and uh, that is what i have noticed that uh, students are not aware or they are not very clear with that uh, formation of a a bus in a systematic order and that's how they go wrong fine so it's a quiz time so i hope all of you are interested and uh, ready to answer my question so let us see what is the first one okay so question number 1 what does it say if a power system has six buses and nine elements then find the number of branches of a tree and the number of links okay so my dear students please do it fast and let me know what is the answer okay i repeat if a power system has six buses just recall the formulas okay if it have a six buses and nine elements then find the number of branches of a tree and the number of links so if we have not uh, talked or we have not told anything about the line charging admittance then it is understood that we are asking the question without line charging admittance fine so if it is having a six buses how many branches will i have please keep it in mind one of the bus will be taking it as reference bus so i will be all together i will be having a six nodes and i'll be having five buses fine so answer will be the you know the number of branches will be equal to the n minus 1 so the answer is going to be 5 and what is the formula for link yes it is number of elements minus number of branches so number of elements are given 9 so 9 minus 5 will give you 4 so the answer is 4 okay hope all of you have understood this particular question okay so let us see our next question question number 2 what does it says does the size of bus incidence matrix a increases by adding line charging admittance justify your answer so just now we have discussed so i hope all of you know the answer fine guys so we know yes the size of the matrix will change with the addition of line charging admittance so if you have to justify your answer please take an example and justify that like just how i have explained you with the help of one particular network justify your answer fine so we have seen basically if the half line charging admittances are added to the network what will happen the number of rows or the number of elements will increased by number of buses okay and the number of columns will increased by 1 because the reference node will automatically come into picture when we consider the line charging admittance so that is the basic 
concept of addition of line charging admittance and it plays a role uh, in forming of vibus formation which we'll see in the later lectures fine i hope it is clear okay so we have one more question so what is this compute the size of incidence matrix a for a power system with five buses and eight lines with and without line charging admittance okay so please do it fast just now we have done one example and all of you i hope have understood that particular concept so please tell me first all of you do without line charging admittance and then you do it with line charging admittance please do it okay please keep it in mind without line charging admittance i have five buses so one of the bus will be considered as reference bus okay fine so i have eight lines so what will be the size of a matrix okay number of elements will be eight and number of columns will be n minus 1 okay so you will be having four so the size of matrix a is going to be 8 cross 4 fine next with line charging admittance we told the rows will get increased by number of buses so right now how many rows you have eight in this previous answer you can see the number of rows you are having as eight so with this eight add the number of buses how many buses you have five you remember don't take it as four because that is in the case of when line charging admittances were not present now when you take the line charging admittances into picture your ground point already exist so that means totally you will have six nodes and five buses so 8 plus 5 because your rows will get added by the number of buses so 8 plus 5 will give you 13 and what will happen to your column column will get increased by 1 so basically my answer will be 13 cross 5 for with half line charging admittance the size of a matrix so the size of a matrix will be 13 cross 5 if you add the line charging admittance okay fine so i hope you have enjoyed today's lecture and uh, you have understood the concept of bus incidence matrix and we will use this bus incidence matrix in formation of y bus in the next lecture thank you have a nice day